recorded. Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer Laszlo Mizrahi, President of Respectability. Respectability is a nonprofit organization working to enable people with disabilities to have a better future. One of the things that we are very delighted to do as an organization is to offer free webinars on tools that are really helpful for people who want to enable people with disabilities to achieve great things in the workplace. This is terrific for people with disabilities who want to work, of course, but it's also fabulous for employers who want to have access to the best talent and for taxpayers who want to be sure that we have the best country possible and that we are making government work better and cost less. We'd love to see what the private sector is doing and the innovations that are coming out of the nonprofit sector. And therefore, we're always pleased to work with Carol Glazer and her team from NOD. They're one of the leading organizations in working with companies that want to do the right thing for people with disabilities, but they're not in it for pity or charity. They're in it because it's good for business. They understand that it makes their country, their companies stronger and they're better their bottom lines better. We're going to speak today about the Disability Employment Tracker and Disability Employer Seal of Approval. This is something that the National Organization on Disability has brought forward that is really quite innovative and it's really a wonderful tool for employers and I'm delighted you're going to hear about it today. We have two terrific speakers. The first is Carol Glazer and Carol is the president of of NOD. She's been with them since 2006 and she's always bringing forward new and very fresh ideas, developing, you know, signature employment demonstrations. She's also a parent who knows what it means to raise a child with multiple disabilities. We also have Andy Traub with us who is an expert on disability employment. He's uh, newer to NOD, but he's previously worked with some terrific companies like AMC Theaters, Google, Best Buy, and others on disability employment initiatives. So his experience is very much from the real world of the private sector. So I'm delighted that so many have joined us on the line today, and I'm turning it over to Carol and to Andy. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, thank Jennifer. You. Uh, Andy, you'll get us started. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you all for joining today. Um, we're very excited to uh, present to you the Disability Employment Tracker and talk to you about the newly announced uh, seal of approval. Um, today, for the purpose of, of what are we going to go through, we're certainly going to talk about you know, how organizations use Disability Employment Tracker to enhance their disability and veteran hiring practices. Um, it's not just a survey, but it's actually a tool that allows companies to self-diagnose where they're at and provides them a roadmap to uh, move forward in the disability employment and veteran employment journey. Those of you who may be familiar with the tracker in the past, we're actually going to go over some of the new enhancements that we have to uh, not only the tracker, but to uh, tracker-related uh, products, such as the uh, disability employment tracker scorecard, the new executive presentations, which we're very excited about, as well as, as mentioned earlier, the disability employer seal approval. With that, though, I'll turn it over to Carol to give an overview of who we are at, at NOD. Thank you, Andy. As I look at who's on this webinar, um, I realize that uh, many of you could probably be doing the webinar itself because you've been in the field for so long and working so hard. So it's really an honor to have an opportunity to be with you today, and we will have time for a conversation with you, such as those conversations go on webinars, and we're very excited about that. NOD has been around for more than 30 years, and we've, we've addressed just about every facet of disability during that time, whether it's the accessibility of buildings, the World Committee on Disability, transportation, uh, or a whole no uh, number of other issues pertaining uh, to disability as our field has changed pretty dramatically over the last 
30 years. We are now exclusively focused on employment as the single biggest barrier to a good quality of life for people with disabilities. And we do that mainly through working with employers. We, uh, we feel that there are a lot of terrific organizations that are working with candidates. They're working on research. They're working on advocacy. And I would say to you that Jennifer Mizrahi is the freshest and most innovative herself and most energetic and effective advocate that we have in our field right now. So when we looked at that landscape and knew that we wanted to do something about disability employment, uh, we realized that there wasn't much happening on the employer side of the equation and that even though employers now, if they're federal contractors, have to set workforce goals and some of them want to, uh, whether they were required to or not, they just don't know how. They don't know how to make good connections to disability organizations. They don't know what to look for in job candidates. Sometimes they're inadvertently screening people out um, without even wanting to. And so we decided that we could most effectively use our talent and resources to help employers. We do that through three, primarily through three programs. One is the CEO Council, which is more of a, an outward-facing group of companies who want to be seen as employers of choice for people with disabilities. They want to learn from one another. It's a group of about three dozen companies. Uh, we get uh, the group together quite frequently. We do our own webinars. Uh, we publish white papers and we have events for our CEO council. It's a small, intimate group of senior people who like to learn from one another. We also provide professional services to companies, and those are the more inward-facing, um, helping them understand how their practices and policies um, uh, are shaping up, uh, helping them become more, a more welcoming environment for people with disabilities that they do bring into their workforce, and helping them to actually make the right kind of connections to disability organizations. And uh, we have found that that's a, probably the most important service for employers who just don't know where to go and don't know how to screen out groups to meet their labor force needs. The tracker that we'll talk a little bit more about gives us and the field and com uh, companies uh, an effective way of benchmarking their own practices against those of, uh, of others. And as respectability has learned, uh, and most of us know, the tracking component of what you do is an absolutely essential component if you ever want to make change. And the tracker allows companies to see not only where they stack up against one another, uh, along the lines of the 80 questions that are in the survey, but also over time by taking the tracker survey, they can learn where they've come in their own journey. Uh, and that's what we'll be talking more about today. Andy? Um, I'll, I'll just stick with, uh, uh, with the next slide as well. Just a few important points. Um, about of data on, dis uh, on disability as, a, as an element of diversity. Largest minority group, one out of every five Americans, only 17 percent, people are always surprised at this number, only 17 percent of people uh, with disabilities were born uh, with those disabilities. The majority are acquired uh, later in life. Um, and, uh, and, and most people with disabilities have an invisible disability. Uh, the number that we can document is 96%. Uh, the numbers are, are all, all over the place, but we know that it's the, really the vast majority uh, of people um, who have an invisible versus a, dis, uh, a, a, a an invisible versus a visible disability. Uh, going into the next slide, um, this just gives you some of the data points, uh, things that we know from uh, the research. I mentioned uh, the 56 million Americans. It's the largest diversity group uh, in the country, um, the one out of every five people. Uh, we know that nearly 80 percent of uh, Americans who are working age, that number is about 30 million, um, are not employed. Uh, but we also know that the majority of those people can work and want to work. Uh, we know about changes in uh, Department of Labor regulations affecting federal contractors that require them to set workforce goals both for people with disabilities as well as for protected veterans, that's Section 503 of the Rehab and VEVRA uh, respectively. Uh, and we also know from the research that both uh, uh, corporate competitiveness 
uh, and culture are improved by having disability as an important segment of a diversity strategy. And we also know that the data tell us that consumers will actually switch brands to companies if they know that that's a company that hires disability. So it really gives you the bottom line perspective of why this is not only a, the right thing to do uh, and a good thing to do, but why it's good for business. We also know that uh, the numbers on retention, the numbers on absenteeism, on loyalty, all point in a very, very positive direction for this work for this workforce. So we know that it's good, uh, uh, Jennifer started out by talking about how this is good for companies and it's also good for the country and we very firmly believe that and the research backs it up. Sandy? Yes, thank you. So let's talk to the brass tacks about what this disability employment tracker actually is. It's a robust diagnostic tool that companies can actually use to self-assess where they're at on the disability journey. Um, one of the things I will say is, and as I know that several of you on the call have been in this field and in this environment for a while, um, this is a journey. Uh, the destination is still way out there on the horizon, uh, but uh, it is a journey. It, it comes in stages and steps, and, and some things can be done um, short term that are quick hits, some of them are midterm and some of them are long term aspirational goals. But it, it allows a company to actually understand where it currently is on that journey. It is free. It is confidential. Uh, it costs nothing. But I, we definitely go through very stringent uh, confidentiality protocols. Sirota Surveys, who uh, Carol mentioned earlier, um, is one of our is our partner in crime in this. They actually have uh, done surveys for several decades. Um, some of you may actually have Sirota as, as one of your vendors and other surveys for your organization. But there's high levels of confidentiality, um, so we do not share results uh, in any way other than an aggregate form. Uh, there's no company-specific uh, results shared uh, with anybody outside of a very small uh, team between Sirota and NOD but allows you to look at the entire employment life cycle. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Um, but everything from attracting, hiring, and retaining individuals and disabil with disabilities as well as veterans. The thing we're most proud about the tracker is that this was not created in a vacuum. The tracker, four years ago when we started this process, we actually worked very closely with a significant number of companies on a task force to actually help create and develop the question sets that were, have been employed in the tracker itself. So it was based upon the needs for businesses and it was developed with corporate leaders. As the tracker has evolved, corporate leaders have been involved in helping us understand and know what businesses need um, and help create question sets as the tracker has continued to evolve. So let's dive down a little bit more into what is actually assessed so we have four big buckets that most of the questions fall into. One big part is the climate and culture of an organization. Things we look at is, you know, what are your employee engagement? Uh, what's your policies and practices regarding individuals with disabilities, veteran hiring, um, and how transparent is the organization with regards to those policies and philosophies? Um, recruitment. Uh, in the employment life cycle. How do we go about recruiting? Um, the onboarding process, which, you know, I can attract them, I can, you know, want to hire them, but it's, it's the onboarding can also be a way that people can't ever get through the process and leads to um, dissatisfaction or a person not even actually starting on the job. Performance management, accountability. Um, how are we managing the performance for individuals with disabilities, but on the other side, how are we managing the performance of the hiring managers and what their expectations are of them. Accommodation practices. Uh, do you have an accommodations policy? Um, how available is it? How quickly do you get most accommodation requests um, answered? Um, the other thing is, does your employee, do your employees know how to ask for an accommodation? And even one step further, do the managers know when an accommodation is being asked for and what to do with that? Uh, we also talk about tracking and measurement. We have disclosure protocols and uh, disclosure 
uh, how federal contractors are using disclosure campaigns or not. Employee surveys, um, how often, what's asked on it, do, comp do individuals have an opportunity to self-identification or self-ID in those surveys. But then, you know, we talk about what are the outcomes in the past 12 months. Let's talk about, you know, your, your higher rates. Um, Annie, we seem like we've lost your audio. Are you still there? Hello? We can now hear you. Sorry. Thank you. So uh, outcomes in the past 12 months, uh, where are you currently at um, with your hiring practices? But it's also forward-looking. What are the goals that your company and the strategy that you want to deploy for the next 12 to 18 months to increase your hiring of individuals with disabilities and veterans? So it is really a, a, a very well-rounded um, assessment. I will also go far, so far as to say that our company representation and industry representations within the tracker over the past two years have been fantastic. 47% um, are Fortune 500, 87% are federal contractors. Uh, certainly our industry representation is robust over the past two years and just looking at the current in employers who are registered and signed up and currently taking the tracker for this year, we're going to greatly expand this list of, of industry that are represented. To give you an idea, when, when we created the tracker and as we continue to create the tracker, we try and keep it at company size neutral as well as industry neutral. So as you'll see on the chart on the right, you know, we have uh, over Companies with over 50,000 employees uh, represent um, about a quarter of our respondents. But then we also have a significant enough group of companies that have, you know, 10,000 or less employees, which represents about 23%, so another quarter. So, so it is a, a, a great group of cohorts within the, the tracker population. For those of you who may have been, who may be familiar with the tracker and have taken in the past, one of the great enhancements we have for this year is the scorecard. We've heard from the participants and business leaders on what they really need to see and what they'd like to see and how it gets presented, the information regarding their results. So a company will submit their results, we will analyze the data, and then a scorecard will be sent back to the company, not only giving uh, you an idea of, of you know, how your company stacks up against the leading practices of, of other organizations, as well as people who have taken the tracker. But um, it also gives you areas of strengths and areas of opportunity for improvement on that report. Um, we have created the report in a manner in which you can print that report and actually take it to any level of work within the organization to talk about your uh, disability and veteran hiring practices. It's very clean um, and is well represented of, you know, your answers are provided not only for this year, if you have taken in the past, you'll actually see your answers over the previous um, trackers as well. Um, we also are adding new this year, I talked a little bit about the demographics of companies who've taken the survey thus far. You also get a, a very dynamic um, demographic report on the companies who have taken the tracker um, for this year as well. There's also, we've, once you receive your report, we've had companies and many of our companies say, okay, now what? You know, I have this great report, I know what my baseline is, where I currently stand, but I don't understand how to get to the next level. And we've created a disability employment tracker executive briefing, which this allows NOD subject matter experts on disability employment to come in either virtually or on site to provide very detailed reports on your, uh, on your data, very customized to uh, what you've submitted. We go item by item, give you very specific benchmarking um, data to the entire or, you know, population of people who've taken the tracker. But we give you some of these, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, maybe there's some low-hanging fruit, that low cost but high impact that we would recommend 
to your organization based upon your data. Um, then there's some midterm things that may require a little bit of effort or maybe a little bit of uh, expenditure to be able to take the next step. But then, you know, we sit down and we, we talk about long-term aspirational goals of your company and provide um, additional recommendations that may be longer term. Maybe something needs to be a CapEx expenditure or something like that, very aspirational in nature, but it really helps provide you a roadmap to move you along that disability and veteran employment journey. While we're there, there's are certainly options for continued education that we can do um, and target towards your executives or your hiring managers uh, from you know, everything from disability employment awareness to maybe you want a rapid assessment of your facility. Um, there's a lot of things that we can actually do while we're there on site. And this, the, the disability employment tracker briefing is a product for, for a fee. Um, the tracker and the scorecard are free. That comes with, that's just price of admission uh, for you to, to get your data analyzed. We're extremely excited um, to announce this year um, we will be offering and awarding the NOD Leading Disability Employer Seal of Approval. Um, it is a it is data driven, so it actually is tied to the tracker. So when we analyze data um, from the tracker, companies who meet certain performance thresholds will receive the, dis the Disability Employer Seal of Approval. It will be awarded annually, so organizations will need to submit the tracker and be able to submit for the, uh, seal, of, the seal of Approval um, on a yearly basis. It does examine all the key areas that we talked about earlier, such as identifying and sourcing talent, um, and uh, onboarding, performance management, climate and culture, as well as tracking and measurement. Uh, I want, do want to mention that the seal, or not the seal, the tracker is currently open. It is available for uh, you to um, sign up and, and take now. Um, it'll be open through March 2nd, um, so we want to make sure that you're aware that, that the uh, tracker is available, and we're going to talk about how to sign up for that uh, here in a minute. Companies, just because you take the tracker does not necessarily mean that you have to be considered for the SEAL. There is an option to opt out for consideration of the SEAL um, on the, the, the tracker itself. Um, however, we would strongly encourage you to can be considered for the SEAL because we found that companies tend to sell themselves short on their disability employment and veteran hiring readiness. Um, and so we always encourage companies to, to stay in and, and be considered for the SEAL. Going for the SEAL, just like the tracker data itself, is completely confidential. So if a company, if your company were to take it, um, and fall short of those thresholds, there will never be any public record or uh, acknowledgement that your company tried for it and, and missed out or is on the outside of the threshold. Um, so there, there is really very little risk uh, in um, being assessed for the SEAL. We will only publicly um, recognize companies who actually achieve the SEAL, but no data will ever be associated with that. It will just be you know, Company X received the, suit, the Disability Employer Seal approval from the National Organization on Disability, and that's what will be provided. There will never be any data shared, uh, company-specific data shared about that at all. We have a great relationship with Diversity, Inc. Um, Luke Viscani is one of our esteemed board members as well. In the past years, um, companies who have been going with the or, – or, attempted to achieve the diversity top 10 companies for people with disabilities. The tracker was um, a consideration when they were going through that awarding process. For this year, it is actually now a requirement. So if a company wants to be in the diversity top 10 companies for people with disabilities, um, they will have to take the tracker. If, if you don't take the tracker, you can't be considered for that uh, top 10 list. So how do I sign up? What does this all look like? So here's the quick timeline of what the, the tracker is. Uh, as I mentioned, it's open to March 2nd. Uh, 
it's your deadline to submit responses for year three. We will then collect all the data. We'll start doing our data analysis in the spring. Uh, in April, your scorecards will be delivered back to you um, at your company. And then right now we actually have the fall. Uh, it could very well move to uh, the beginning of, of 2017 when we open up the tracker for next year. We are already in the midst of creating and the enhancements for year four. So uh, it's a very dynamic tool. How do you sign up? Sign up is very easy. Uh, you can sign up at www.nod.org slash tracker. We ask and require only one representative per company to take the tracker. This helps mitigate multiple uh, surveys from the company and then trying to deliver, you know, figure out where they actually are. So one authorized representative, and it usually is an HR professional or somebody who has um, access to things such as your HRIS system, uh, survey information, uh, you know, the policies, practices, and procedures, but uh, it is only one authorized representative. There is a functionality to actually start and pause as you take the, the tracker. The tracker right now consists of a little over 60 questions for the disability side and 20 questions for veterans. And what we've heard so far from feedback from the employers is even though the tracker is greatly expanded from last year in terms of the number of questions, it still is taking less than two hours to take the, the um, survey, and many are saying they're able to complete it in under an hour. So having been in HR for almost 20 years myself and taken many surveys when creating the survey, we're like, it has to be, it has to be simple, it has to be fairly quick. Um, I will say that the tracker is totally focused on workforce. It doesn't really go into um, other areas such as the Diversity Inc. or the, the DEI. We're maybe talking about more about your marketplace as well as you know having components in there about um, vendor relations and vendor management and that sort of thing. Ours is specific to workplace and, and, and helping people find jobs in organizations and find help the organizations be attractive to the disability and veterans community. Once you go to the tracker at the website, uh, you'll then receive a, um, a link from Sirota to start your assessment, and then you can complete the tracker online. In theory, you could actually go right after this webinar, sign up, and have the, the um, tracker completed by the end of the day today. So certainly with, you know, the tracker allows companies, as we talked about, to really take that hard look at where they actually are. Um, the employers are certainly changing the conversation on disability, as many of you on this webinar know and are involved in. But we always talk about data. And you can't understand where you're at until you measure it. And then how, where do you want to go next requires more measurement. So. It also allows you to build that case and business case internally. This is not a matter, and Jennifer mentioned earlier, this isn't about charity. This is not about make you feel good. This is about really impacting the business and impacting the bottom line of the business. Um, and the war for talent we know is on. And being able to tap into a pool of highly talented individuals who want to work, and Carol mentioned all the positives of bringing individuals with disabilities in the workforce into a business. It, it makes all the difference in the world when businesses actually see the benefit, uh, both internally to the bottom line as well as to their employees. And with that, we open that up for for certainly for questions. Thank you for that great presentation, um, Andy and Carol. We're so delighted to have you with us. Operator, can you explain to folks how they can ask their questions right now? Sure, Jennifer. If you have called in to ask a verbal question, please press 7 followed by the hash key on your phone now. Again, 7 followed by the hash key or the pound sign on your phone now. You can also write in comments or questions, and so that's in the chat on the lower left of your screen. So if anybody has any questions or comments, please go ahead. I see that somebody is typing something in yet. Uh, but I can't see it yet, so I'll just look for that. But meanwhile, operator, is there anyone who has a question on the line? No telephone questions on queue. Okay, very good.
I see that Vincent has a question. I'm wondering if this would be a useful tool for public entities like a local county and state government position. This is Carol, and I would say absolutely. It's, it's a tool that's been designed for anybody who has a workforce and anybody who has an interest in disability as a key component of workforce diversity. Uh, let me add on to that, this is Jennifer, that um, there are some fabulous um, projects going on in terms of inclusive employment in the public sector. So, first of all, President Obama has done some um, executive orders to expand inclusion of people with disabilities in the federal workforce. Additionally, we see that with Governor Mark Dayton in uh, Minnesota, who's working on it, and some work being done by uh, the governors of Washington State, uh, Jay Inslee, and terrific work being done by Governor Jack Markell in Delaware. So if you want some really wonderful best practices, I actually think the Delaware work was terrific, and they've put a lot of HR videos for public employees online. We did a webinar with the state of Delaware that's on our webinar site. If you want to take a look at their uh, WIOA initiatives, that is a part of it. The other place that's really doing a terrific job is Montgomery County, Maryland. Montgomery County, Maryland, which is just outside of Washington, D.C., it happens to be where I live, over 50% of people with disabilities are employed in Montgomery County. Part of that is an affirmative action um, piece of legislation that went on the ballots uh, not too many years ago where the voters actually took it to a vote as to whether they wanted to have affirmative action or not in county government. It passed with 80% of the vote, 80% of the vote. And since then, uh, we have in Montgomery County a number of federal official uh, federal offices like NIH and other places, and we have the uh, county government. So that is a huge problem part of the workforce. In fact, in the state of Maryland, 20%, 20% of all jobs in the state of Maryland are public service jobs. So the fact that this tracking tool can be used for the public sector is very, very important for people across the country, whether it's state government, local government, or federal government. This can be uh, very, very helpful. So I'm very happy, um, Andy and Carol, that it is open um, for that. And I see that uh, Vincent is going to pass it on to his county commissioner um, on disabilities. I think that is really terrific. I'd like to um, also have you pass on to them that they should take a look at what's been done in Montgomery County because it's been so very successful. I see that there's another question um, above. I'm just trying to scroll up to it um, from Faye, who says this was a very helpful, and is the seal of approval a badge that can be used for marketing purposes for a company? You know, I, uh, this is a great opportunity, and that's a great question. Thank you, Faye, to mention uh, a study, the results of a study that um, – Getting Hired did. Uh, that's an online job board, uh, and most of the job applicants they deal with, 50% uh, of them have college degrees, so it's a very diverse workforce. And they did a survey of all of their job seekers, and what are the qualities that a job seeker looks for, well, a job seeker with disabilities looks for, uh, when they're contemplating accepting a job with a company. And the interesting fact, number one, is, is the company disability friendly? That that was ranked higher than wages or job security, which are the two things that we most often associate with um, with, lo with decisions about whether to, to, to accept a position. But for those candidates that were surveyed by getting hired, disability friendliness was uh, number one. And so the way this loops back here is that if a company wants to be perceived as disability friendly so they can attract the very best talent when they're looking for, uh, for new workers with disabilities, this is a very good tool for them to take. It's a free tool and it shows you your strengths and weaknesses and exactly what you have to work on in order to be perceived as, as disability friendly. And the seal of approval actually gives you the opportunity. There is, a, there is a kit that we provide to companies who earn the seal that allows them to advertise the, the logo that you saw earlier in the webinar 
uh, on their website, and there's a press kit that tells you how you can uh, publicize the fact that you have earned that seal of approval. But again, you've got to do well on the disability employment tracker, and, 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 and there's clearly motivation to do that as the race for talent accelerates. Right. Um, operator, are there any um, phone calls with questions? No audio questions. I'll just give it another moment to see if anyone else asks an, uh, a written question or an, uh, a phone call question. But let me just say how um, much we love to work with uh, Carol Glazer and the whole NOD uh, team and how much, Andy, we appreciate uh, that you were willing to do this. And I want to point out again that the um, PowerPoint is online and that their contact um, information is right up on the screen right now. That's T-R-A-U-B-A -A at NOD. Dot org for Andy Traub um, and also uh, Carol Glazer, it's glazerc at nod.org um, is how you can reach Carol Glazer. If you ever want to reach out to us at Respectability, don't hesitate to reach out to me at Jennifer M at respectabilityusa.org. I want to thank all of you who have been on this webinar and conference call with us. Operator, are there any final calls on the line? No calls on the line. So thank you to our speakers, and thanks to all who participated. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all. Thanks, Jennifer, for the great work you do as well. You too. Bye-bye.